Aloha, and welcome to this episode of the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. My guest today is a two-time Grammy-winning musician, guitarist, and producer who hails from Jamaica, who has spent the past ten, two decades building a name for himself and has cemented a prime position as the go-to guitarist for a slew of notable projects. His sound is marked by a primary influences that fuse jazz, reggae, and rock. He has played and toured with Monty Alexander, Julian Marley, and Damien Dong Marley, the sons of the late reggae icon Bob Marley, Shaggy, Diana King, Lauren Hill, Maxi Priest, and the list goes on. His latest album, Cliff Marley Tosh, is currently in the Grammy consideration phase of voting at the Recording Academy. I am so happy to have him here today. Let's welcome all the way from Jamaica, Mr. Robert Dubois Brownie to the show. Aloha, how are you? Hi, Gwen. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I am so well. I am so glad to have you here on the show all the way from Jamaica. Yes, yes, yes. Sunny, sunny, hot Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much uh, for being here with us today. Let's get this, let's get this, this train started, you know, like I like to say. What or who got you started in the music industry? How did you get oh. your beginning? Well, it's it's a family thing, you know, because I grew up in a family of musicians. My dad and uncles, they were all a band, you know, and they're all musicians. And if um, if you're familiar with the Jamaican music industry, you know, there's Cleve Brownie from Steely and Cleve, which was a, a production duo with many hits from the 80s coming up. Um, Danny Brown is same thing, um, producer, guitarist. Dalton Brown is also guitarist. Glenn Brown, my father, is a bass player. Mm -hmm. And uh, my uncle Noel, keyboard player. So they were all musicians and they had a band, uh, Brownie Bunch. And so watching them as I grew up, you know, it's just what I wanted to do and that's what I ended up doing. So early on, the influence was by, you know, family, pretty much. Your family? Yeah. So, but how did you get to start? How did you start playing the guitar? Oh, wow. I, my first instrument is drums, actually. And <laughs> at a young age, um, before I was 10, you know, I was playing the drums. But my father brought a, a guitar to the house. I, I didn't grow up with my dad. I grew up with my mom. My mom mm -hmm. grew me. But dad is always, you know, visiting and stuff. So I have a twin brother, Richard, who plays bass. So dad brought a guitar to the house for my brother because he says, you know, a good bass player also knows how to play guitar. So instead of me, you know, every day I used to set up the drum kit and play. And, you know, I just found it easier to not set up the drum kit and take up the guitar <laughs> and, and jam with my brother while he was playing bass because he wasn't interested in the guitar at all. So it was just a convenient thing for me to pick up the guitar and say, okay, let's jam some, let's try some together like this. And it just became what I did over and over until I just picked up the guitar full time. Nice. Now, you play different genres of music, you know, coming from Jamaica, you know, reggae, right? Yeah. But you do reggae, you do jazz, you do rock. I mean, you do it all, R&B. And we're going to yeah. get to that part later. Um, but what is your, your favorite genre of music to play? Oh, to play, definitely reggae. Definitely. Reggae? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's in the blood, it's in the culture, it's in the system, it's, you know, all around me. So definitely reggae. Reggae? Mm -hmm. Now, you know, the, the pandemic affected all of us, okay? And I know it affected you guys in Jamaica, of course, over here in the United States, Europe, everywhere. What did you do? to get through those difficult times um, with the pandemic? Because, you know, the entertainment industry had came to a halt, so. Right, uh, pretty much I was trying to focus on completing projects that I have, you know, so because there was no traveling, as you say, and there's no shows. So I took the time to actually, you know, try and create projects, you know, keep busy. So I did a lot of recording. I'm still trying to finish up stuff that I've started. So that's basically it. You know, just trying to complete stuff and learning how to um, better promote my music as well. Now, you say your family, you know, that's how you got started was for your family. But who were some of your influencers, you know, in the music industry that influenced you besides your family? 
Oh, because I was going to mention that. I know, first. You get... <laughs> <laughs> well, um, guitar-wise, there's. Um, I remember I was a real Hendrix buff at one point. You know, I really admire Hendrix. Hence, that's the rock, the beginning of the rock influence. And there are cats like Lee Lee Rettenauer, uh, Larry Carlton, uh, George Benson, obviously, and Norman Brown. You know, those jazz cats. And then you have. On the rock side, again, you have Satriani, Joe Satriani, uh, Steve Vai, and those guys. Um, but early on, when I used to listen mostly reggae, the Marley guitar players, Junior Marvin and um, Al Anderson, they were really, you know, the ones I listened to to get the whole reggae vibe. Uh-huh. Also, I used to go to, my dad used to play with Ziggy Marley back in the 90s, and I used to go to his rehearsals all the time. So the guitarists for Ziggy Marley, at the time, um, Earl Chinna Smith and um, Ian Coleman, busy Ian Coleman, those two guitarists were also, you know, major influence on my uh, Jamaican style of playing. Mm-hmm. Now you have collaborated with um, with a, with quite a few people, okay, on on your music. Who would be your dream collaboration? And this, the, I asked this question because. It interests me to find out what each artist I ask what they're going to say. You know, and I've, I've had some shockers. You know, but who would be your your dream collaboration? Does it have to be a singer or a? It could musician? be anyone, anybody, oh, anybody that you want. Anybody. Yeah, anybody that you want to work with that you would love to work with, dead or you know, or alive. I, I've actually never thought about it, but now that you asked the question, probably Prince, because I admire uh-huh. his guitar playing and his compositions and his whole vibe. So maybe Prince would have, yeah, Prince would have been a great person to collab with, yeah. <laughs> and I can see you, I can see you doing something um, of a Prince song. I see you, I see you doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then maybe add that little island flavor to it, like. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Like I like to say. Now let's talk about your uh, your music. You know, now my show is, is of course smooth jazz. So I'm going out of my realm a little bit because you do everything. You do the, the reggae, the jazz, the rock. Okay. So we're going to talk about uh, your projects that you have done. Um, and you do have two Grammys. You have two Grammys. And we spoke earlier, of course, they're not your solo project, but I feel that you're going to get one for your solo project. But your two Grammys were for the first one was for the Miseducation of Lauren Hill. Okay. That was the best R&B album. And then your second Grammy was um, for Sting and Shaggy's album. I think it was 44876. Right. Okay, and that was best reggae album. How was it to 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 receive those Grammys? How was it? Well, it, it, it was it was great. It was a good feeling, you know, to accomplish that. I, actually, you know, I, I I when I play, I I don't look for accolades or you know praise or anything like that. So when a project actually does something good, it's like wow, cool, you know. But it's it's a good feeling to know that something that I participated in actually did well in the industry, you know, got recognized by industry peers. So it, it's a great feeling and I'm truly grateful all the while. Now we talk about your your up in your new album that's out, your solo album. This is your album entitled yeah. Cliff Marley and Tosh. And like I stated right. earlier, it is in for Grammy consideration. And I'm just hoping and praying I'm, I'm putting it out there for you that it'll get that Grammy nomination and you get that Grammy win. I'm going to put that out there. But it is for <laughs> it's in a Grammy um, consideration for best contemporary instrumental album. Why don't you tell us right. a little bit about this album and how, how did you come about in making this? Okay. Cliff Marley Tush actually was conceptualized years and years ago, maybe from 06. I was playing with Jimmy Cliff at the time, and I think we just came off tour. And around that time, I realized I hadn't put out a project in a while. 
So I figured, yo, let, I tried to, you know, brainstorm and say, what can I do? What can I do? And I said, okay, Jimmy Cliff vibes is still with me. So let's do some Jimmy Cliff songs. Let's do, you know, a couple of Jimmy Cliff covers. And I said, Jimmy Cliff only? No. And then I decided to pick, you know, icons, reggae artists who are icons. Mm -hmm. I said, I have to do Bob Marley. And then Peter Tosh, you know, because... At the time, those three names just came to me, you know, as icons in reggae music. You know, you hear Peter Tash, you, you think the radical roots reggae, and everybody knows Bob Marley. And then uh, Jimmy Cliff is another one. So I decided to do an album from back in 06 with, you know, three songs from each artist. But fast forward to 2020, last year, this album was like, it was just a concept I recorded after the songs and it just stopped because I started touring, doing other stuff and it just kind of get pushed back. So last year, I again said, yo, I haven't put out a project in since 2015. So I'm like, How, what can I do? And I said, hold on, I have this project. Why don't I just complete it? So I, you know, tied with the idea and I decided I have a mailing list. So in order to motivate myself, I said, you know what, let's do the album and give it to all the subscribers on my, on my mailing list. So I said, yeah, subscribers, you know, interested and engaged. So I immediately sent out an email, I think it was early this early December actually, and say, yo, I'm gonna do this project. You love it. It's a cover album. I don't remember the exact wording of the email, but I promised it to be completed by Christmas Day. That would be my Christmas gift to my subscribers. Mm -hmm. And um the minute I sent the email, I was like, Okay, Robert, you can't get out of it now. There's no turning back. <laughs> So you have to finish the project, and I immediately started, you know, finishing the songs. There were a couple of the songs that I did not use that were originally recorded, because I didn't think it fit with where I am musically now. So I recorded, I think, four brand new songs, and compiled the album, mixed it, and finished it. I didn't finish it for Christmas, but they got it for New Year's Eve. <laughs> So <laughs> that's the whole thing with this album. And as I said, you know, what bigger artist, um, Jamaican artist, than a Bob Marley, a Jimmy Cliff, and a Peter Tosh to, you know, show respect to and cover their, excuse me, cover their works. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you do an excellent job with it. I have told you uh, my favorite song on that <laughs> on that album that you cover, but I just want to let the audience know um, about your other albums because you do have three other albums before this one. So the yes. first one is Birth, right? Of two thousand, that was in two thousand and four. Right. The second album um, in two thousand and ten is entitled Electrifying Grooves of Diversion. Right. That right. sounds like an interesting title right there. <laughs> um, we're going to have to come back to that one. Mm -hmm. The third one is Groovy Love Thing in 2015. And then, of course, the one we just talked about is um, their fourth one is Cliff, Marley, and Tosh. But I want to go back to that second one there, Electrifying Grooves of Diversion. What was, what was the inspiration <laughs> behind that one right there? <laughs> um, that, that title came because... You know, when I worked on the songs, they weren't um, traditionally written, meaning usually you come up with a, a melody and you have a chorus and, you know, structure the songs in a particular way. For this one, I actually just got rhythm tracks from, you know, my brother and another producer. And instead of thinking like I'm writing a melody, I just basically played hooks or grooves on the tracks. Uh -huh. And then um, some of them, it goes where you don't expect it, hence the title, <laughs> Electrifying Grooves of Diversion. <laughs> so, and you, the, the word diversion, you can look at it in Jamaican slang also as diversion, which means the version, which version is without ah. lyrics. So it's, it's, it's also a play on words. Ah, so are, are you going to play for us today? 
Sure, yes. Yes. I'd love to. <laughs> well, we're going to wait for you to, uh, to get set up. And we're going to we're going to wait for you to get set up so we can hear you play. You know, I'm excited about this. Cool. I'm always cool. excited to have live music. So I should do that right now, yes? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, one thing. <laughs> So I'm going to play for you from the Groovy Love Thing album, the track that most people seem to like. It's Groovy Little Thing. Yes. <laughs> that was awesome thank you so much thank, thank you, you thank, thank you. you thank you now i have a few more questions for you you don't think you're going to get out that easy we have a few more <laughs> questions for you now you are you are a phenomenal guitar player phenomenal and there there's a lot of other guitar players out there in the music industry tell us what sets you apart 
from the other guitar players out there in the industry. Come on now. I, I, I'm Jamaican. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I believe not not a lot of other guitars has the um, has the the vibe that I have have has the Jamaican essence the essence that I have being Jamaican you know and it's also I mean you have great guitarists who play jazz and all these other genres but how many guitarists can actually you know jump into a reggae thing like and yes. really play reggae nicely so I think that is the main thing that would set me apart from most other guitarists. Nice. Yeah. That was a great answer too. That was a <laughs> great answer because everything I hear you play, I don't care whether it's the R&B portion, the jazz portion or the rock portion. I always hear a little touch of Jamaica up, <laughs> always well, I mean, up in there. Right, you have to be true to who you are and always you know, show your identity at some point. Yes, yes you do. Now, there also are a lot of new artists and musicians out there um, coming into the music industry. You, as an artist that has been on the scene for a long time, what would you say to these new artists that are coming into the industry? What advice would you give to them? Try and try and try. <laughs> Don't stop. Because, um, you know, a lot of people get discouraged when, like even me, you know, when I put, I've put, i been putting out songs and when you look at the streaming numbers and they aren't good, it's very discouraging. But um, if you love what you're doing, just continue to try as hard as you can and learn as much as you can about, you know, marketing and promoting. Because it's, it's 2021, you know. The, there are all these tools available to us to do it ourselves now. You know, there's social media and, and all these other platforms. So try your best to learn about the industry and um, just don't give up because some things that I've done years ago is now, you know, people just noticing them now. So it, it's just do it. And, and I have a lot of friends who record and record and record and never release a song. So don't that uh, that's my other advice to new artists is don't fall into that category. Don't just record and record and record. Um I can in Jamaican music industry slide on bar from Sly and Robbie. His advice I share is an idea, a song is no good if it's on tape or if it's on your hard drive alone. You have to share it with the people. <laughs> so no matter how um you think your song is not ready yet or you are not ready yet you have to start somewhere so put out songs share it with the people share it with the masses and you will grow from there pretty much but keep on and just keep on right now what we have a few more minutes left what do we need to mark on our schedule do what do i need to mark on my schedule and if i want to you know come come see you perform where can people go to, you know, find out more about you and where your performances are? Where can they find out your performances? Oh, wow. Well, well, for now, it's social media strictly and my website, uh, robertdubwise.com. And my social media handles are all pretty much the same, Robert Dubwise Brownie on, you know, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. There is nothing coming out. I mean, sorry, no performance is happening real soon. But um, I have something planned for maybe later this month, a, a video performance that I'm putting out. I'm, I'm shooting for Thanksgiving, but let's see how that goes. Okay. So we're just going to keep, we're going to keep, keep an eye on your website and yes. social media to let us know when that is going to happen because yes. i know for sure i'm going to be looking and i'm going to be there <laughs> to, um, to see you well i want to thank you so much so much for being here um all the way from jamaica i'm gonna have to make a visit to jamaica everybody wants to come to hawaii but now i want to come to jamaica you know <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to come. As I told you, Hawaii is one of my favorite places to visit also. I, I love Hawaii. The vibe is great, you know. Is it? And you know, Hawaii, we have that big reggae scene here. Right, um, right. So you would fit right on in when yep. you come <laughs> over here. So we're yeah. going to have to to make it a point to try and get you here um, for our performance. And I will definitely be in touch with you. But again, thank you so much. For, for for being here on the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection.
Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. And thank you for supporting the music and loving the songs, you know. <laughs> no worries. It is my pleasure. To my viewers and my listeners, until next time, aloha and God bless. <laughs>